Hello, my name is Eddie Tofpik. I'm Head of Technical Analysis and Senior Markets Analyst at ADM Investor Services International Limited, and here is your weekly technical analysis of Kansas City and Minneapolis wheat markets. I'll start with Kansas City wheat. The low water mark on the 18th of August was pivotal to the construction of what happened next. Back then, the market failed to break down through the neckline, currently 820. The big old 50% Fibonacci line of the October 21 to January 2022 move. The market chose to construct a new pattern, a bull channel, currently 1011 to 1072. This was easy enough to do once prices overcame the short medium moving average, currently 928. Remember this moving average will become significant later on. There was a small zone, free, small free zone above it, all the way up to the July 2012 high at 957. And when the market reached 957, I thought there might be issues. See, 957 is the gateway to a congestion area above between 957 to 1001, within which sits the slowly rising long moving average, currently 994. A lot of this congestion was made from 2011 and 2012 and was easily breached on the way up in February and on the way down in June. However, back in those days, they did not have the additional reinforcement of the long moving average in their midst. And it is this, along with the upper bull channel line, that constrained the market topside two weeks ago. In the process, the market took a new shape, primarily caused by the weekly key reversal down made that same week. In fact, it's hard to judge if the shape made the weekly key reversal down or vice versa. Anyway, at the end of that week, the market broke down through the lower bull channel line. Plus, it dropped out of the overhead resistance area and even started moving below the declining medium moving average, currently 933. Prices have continued on lower to this day. Now, much like Chicago wheat, though it's not a complete duplicate, this market has two avenues, though there will no doubt be more available eventually. The first is the straightforward move down with potential targets for the bull channel. Thus, we have a primary target X down in the 903 zone, whilst the secondary hard to reach target X1 is way down below in the 759 zone. The market is not too far away from target X right now. This leads to the second avenue. It is the possibility for the whole of the July today action being not just a flat bottom, but a flat bottom with an extension. Extensions have something like a bull flag within them, and that is what may be being built here ever since mid-August. Personally, it looks a little slack as a pattern, but, and it is an untested but, but, as I said last week, if the short medium moving average, currently 928, manages to hold the market up, and I will add this week the target X at 903 to that list, it either manages to hold up the market, uh, it either manages to hold up the market, and we then see prices revert back up, well, then this second scenario, the larger bottom with an extension, suddenly looks a lot more interesting. Right now, the short medium moving average is being breached. Not that promising a scenario right now, I'm afraid. Minneapolis wheat. Over July and August, this market had been a sideways to lower channeling market and not as exciting as earlier in the summer. In early September, we saw the start of another bullish pattern. It seems to have been prompted by the approach at a steep angle from above of the short medium moving average, currently at 943. And rather than this moving average acting as a cap on any rise, it instead acted as a trigger for a move higher. Remember this moving average, show up later again. This move higher seems to have been slower than in other grains, but prices did start moving in early September into a new bullish pattern. This is a nice segue into the bull channel come ascending expanding wedge pattern that we've seen since, currently 1036 to 1128. I'd previously called this construction rudimentary, not only because it was then rudimentary, but also because this market is, as I've said earlier, way, way behind both Chicago and Kansas City wheat in its construction. You only need to look at where the flatlining long moving average is at, currently 1034, and the declining medium moving average, currently 964, which incidentally seems to have triggered the latest move lower two weeks ago. You only need to see the relative positions of these moving averages compared to the same moving averages in other markets, other grain markets, to appreciate how backwards the action here has been. 
Anyway, two weeks ago, the market broke down through the lower trend line of the bull channel come ascending spanning wedge pattern. This now leaves us with the same two avenues that I can see here as well as in Chicago and Kansas City. Though there will eventually be more scenarios I'm sure available. First is the straightforward move down with potential targets for the bull channel come ascending expanding wedge pattern. Thus we have a primary target X on the downside quite a way lower compared to the other grains involved in the 883 zone whilst the secondary hazard reached reach target X1 is down in the 840 zone. This leads to the second avenue, is the possibility for the whole of the July today action to be a sort of rounded bottom, a rounded bottom with an extension. These extensions have something like a bull flag within them and that is what may be being built here since early September. Personally it looks a little slack as a pattern, but here is the key. If the previously mentioned short medium moving average is a little below current levels or even the 50% Fibonacci line, the August 20 to May 2020 move at 9.55. If they manage to hold the market up and then we see prices revert back up, well, then this second scenario, the larger rounded bottom with an extension, suddenly looks a lot more interesting. Thank you for listening. This weekly broadcast gives the essential market patterns and consequences. Please be aware of the risk disclaimer posted with this broadcast. Copyright is Eddie Topic and ADM Investor Service International Limited. And here comes the final bit.